Chapter 6 Teeth grabbed Tall Paw's scruff and tugged him with a jerk. He gasped as he felt himself swing out into open air. Twisting, his hind paws scrabbled against stones for a moment before Don Stripe whisked him backward onto the grass and dropped him. Watch where you're going, she spat, her eyes wide with horror. Tall Paw stared at his mentor in confusion. Then his gaze slid past her to where the grass ended abruptly. There was a narrow strip of rock before the ground fell away in a sheer jagged drop. Rypaw stared at him wide-eyed. You nearly fell into the gorge. Lark Splash stopped beside her apprentice. We haven't lost a paw to the gorge in a while. Her eyes sparked. This is serious, Don Stripe snapped at her clanmate. I know, Lark Splash meowed softly. But I think Tall Paw's scared enough. Tall Paw's heart pounded so loudly, he could hardly hear what the other cats were saying. Trembling, he peered over the edge of the cliff. At the bottom, water roared, churning between the sheer rock walls like angry storm clouds. It looked like a huge claw had sliced a channel through the moor. Was this where Sandgorse was tunneling? Stay away from the edge, Don Stripe warned. When it rains, the grass gets slippery. Tall Paw backed away, his heart still thumping. Rypaw nudged his shoulder gently with her nose. I should have warned you, she whispered. I forgot you've never seen the gorge before. A distant bark sounded from somewhere downriver, beyond the end of the gorge. Tall Paw's pelt twitched. Is that a dog? Rypaw pricked her ears. Don't worry, it's in River Clan territory, so it's not our problem. Come on, Lark Splash nodded to her apprentice. Let's go check the border. If that dog has been anywhere near, Heather Star will want to know. Rypaw stretched and tasted the air. It's with a two leg. It'll be a daft one then. Lark Splash headed away over the grass, following the line of the gorge as it sloped toward the forest. Who'd want to hang out with a dog? Nasty, slavering things. Two legs are all daft, Rypaw called, chasing after her. Tallpaw turned to Dawnstripe as the pair disappeared down the slope. Are there many dogs on the moor? Dawnstripe gazed across the heather. They come with two legs, but just one or two at a time. Do they ever come near the hollow? Tall Paw had only seen sheep stray close to the camp wall. They don't get a chance. They make so much noise, we always have time to send a patrol to steer them away. Don Stripe didn't sound concerned. Their teeth are no match for a warrior's claws. She pointed her nose along the gorge. Do you see where the land turns flat and marshy? Tall Paw squinted as the sun flashed from between clouds. Farther along the edge of the moor, the river emerged from the gorge and grew fat and sluggish beside low-lying meadows. That's River Clan territory. Donstripe nodded to the forest on the opposite side of the Silver River. And Thunder Clan sleeps and hunts among those trees. Tall Paul wondered what it must be like to live hidden from the sky. Didn't Thunder Clan long to feel the sun on their pelts or the wind in their ears? They had more in common with tunnelers than moor runners. Dawnstripe headed away from the gorge and crossed the slope, following a ridge of earth topped with heather. It curved like an endless tail, wrapping protectively around the moor, Tall Paw's legs were aching by the time they halted at the top of a steep descent. The smooth grass swept down into a line of dense trees. That's the way to four trees, Don Stripe told him. Tall Paw stared at the canopy of green leaves trembling in the breeze. Where's the great rock? He peered through the branches, trying to glimpse the huge rock he'd heard his clanmates talking about when they returned from gatherings. Don Stripe flicked her tail. It's hidden at the moment, but you'll see it soon enough. 
Tallpaw's heart leaped. He'd forgotten that he'd be allowed to attend gatherings now that he was an apprentice. Paws pricking with excitement, he trotted after Dawnstripe as she continued around the edge of the moor. That's Shadow Clan territory, she told him as he fell in beside her. Tallpaw followed her gaze to the swath of pines that had taken over from the brighter green trees of ThunderClan's territory. A bare gray strip divided the pines from the rest of the forest, cutting a path like a river across the landscape. A faint roar touched Tallpaw's ear fur, and he watched tiny shapes move along the strip, flashing like drops of water in the sunshine. Is that the thunder path? Yes, Dawn Stripe meowed over her shoulder. You'll learn how to cross when you go to high stones. Tallpaw's fur pricked. Dawnstripe was talking about his visit to the Moonstone, where cats shared tongues with Star Clan. For a moment, his head spun with excitement, and he had to stop until the ground felt steady beneath his paws again. Ahead of them, the grass sloped more steeply, and before long, they were trekking through deep gorse once more. This is the High Moor, Dawnstripe explained. We're heading for the very edge of clan territory. The edge of clan territory? Tallpaw paused and reared onto his hind legs, trying to catch a glimpse. But the ridge of earth they had been walking on had given way to a rutted sheep trail, and gorse blocked his view. You'll see soon enough. Donstripe veered onto a rabbit trail roofed by heather fronds. Tallpaw ducked after her, his pelt pricking uneasily as the heather closed around him. The air was stuffy and still. Imagine how much worse a tunnel would be. Tallpaw took a deep breath and focused on Don Stripe's golden tail as it bounced in front of him. Suddenly, he felt wind on his whiskers as the heather opened onto a grassy hilltop. Tallpaw blinked with relief as short wind-dappled grass rolled away in front of him. He could breathe again. The grass sloped down to the thunder path, pale and flat and striking against the soft landscape. It was closer here, and Tallpaw flinched as a monster tore past, roaring louder than the wind. Beyond the thunder path, squares of grass marked out by thin rows of bushes surrounded a cluster of dark gray two-leg nests, and farther still, tall cliffs marked the beginning of a range of jagged peaks. Is that high stones? Tallpaw whispered, his gaze on the distant horizon. High stones are the cliffs. Dawnstripe stood beside him, her ears stiff against the streaming wind. You'll travel there one day, when you visit Mother Mouth and touch the moonstone. Tallpaw shivered as the wind lifted his fur. Every wind clan apprentice shared tongues with Star Clan at the moonstone before they received their warrior name. He shifted his paws, trying to ignore his stinging pads. The long walk around wind clan's territory had left them tender and grazed. How would he ever make it to high stones? Look out! A voice echoed from the heather behind. Mud hole! There was alarm in the mew. Tallpaw whipped around and scanned the heather. What was that? Don Stripe padded toward a rabbit hole that was half hidden between the roots of a bush. The tunneling patrols down there, she explained. Another voice echoed from the darkness. Let's shore it up with rocks. I shifted some back at the double fork. Fetch them before there's a slide. Tallpaw crept forward, sniffing. He smelled plum claws scent and hickory nose. Do you think they need help? He asked warily. He didn't want to creep down into the earth. They know what they're doing, Don Stripe told him. They won't want us getting in the way. She headed away from the rabbit hole. Tallpaw hurried after her. Aren't we even going to look? Surely the tunnels were part of Wind Clan territory. Their clanmates might be in trouble. 
I'm a moor runner. I don't go underground if I can help it. Dawnstripe shook her pelt as though she were shaking out soil. One of the tunnelers will take you down during your training and teach you the basics of hunting and patrolling down there. Tallpaw tried to ignore the tightening in his chest. I will be able to breathe underground. I will. Instead, he gazed toward the distant horizon, relishing the wind that lifted his fur. He lifted his chin. If Shrewpaw, Rightpaw, Stagpaw, and Dopaw can survive basic tunnel training, so can I. As Dawnstripe headed through a gorse patch, Tallpaw raced to catch up. He was relieved to feel the ground smooth under paw, well trod by sheep. His paws burned with every step, and he winced as he hopped over a lump of dirt berries. Where are we going now? Camp, Donstripe glanced at him. You must be tired. No, Tallpaw lied. I could stay out for days. A purr rumbled in Donstripe's throat. Did you like what you saw? Tallpaw nodded enthusiastically. I didn't imagine Wind Clan territory was so huge. We guard the edge of the world, Dawnstripe told him. The other clans sit cozy in their marshes and woods, fed by the river and sheltered by our moor. They never know the true taste of the wind or the scent of first snow. There's no clan cat faster or more nimble than a Wind Clan cat, she glanced at Tallpaw's long black tail. You'll have good balance. It won't be long before you can outpace a rabbit, even on rough ground. I was named for my tail. Tallpaw puffed out his chest. He remembered what Sandgorse had told Heatherstar, that it was a tunneler's tail and would make it easy to drag him from a cave-in. Relief flooded Tallpaw's pelt. He'd never have to face a cave-in now that he was going to be a moor runner. Then he pictured Sandgorse's eyes, dark with disappointment. Guilt formed a lump in his throat as the gorse opened onto Heather, and Tallpaw glimpsed the hollow cradling the camp. He broke into a run, overtaking Dawnstripe and racing for the entrance. His paws skidded on the grass as he swung around and ducked through the gap in the heather to burst into the clearing beyond. Barkpaw called from outside the medicine den. You're back! He raced across the tussocks and skidded to a halt in front of Tallpaw. What did you see? Tallpaw winced at the sharp tang of herbs wafting from his friend. Everything, four trees, Thunder Clan territory, and River Clan and Shadow Clan, and the high stones, his pelt pricked suddenly, and the gorge. Rypaw said you nearly fell into it, Barkpaw rubbed green sap from his nose. Is Rypaw back already? Tallpaw scanned the camp and spotted her sharing prey with Shrewpaw and Stagpaw outside the apprentice's den. She had feathers in her whiskers. She and Lark Splash caught a grouse, Barkpaw told him. Tallpaw could smell its scent wafting across the grass. His belly rumbled. Do you want to share a mouse? Barkpaw glanced back at the medicine den. I'll have to check with Hawkheart. I'll fetch one from the prey heap. Tallpaw headed across the grass. His paws stung and he almost tripped. Are you okay? Barkpaw darted in front of him. Is it a thorn? My pads are sore from walking. Tallpaw lifted a forepaw and sniffed it gingerly. There was a faint scent of blood. Barkpaw leaned closer. It's just a bit grazed, he told him. Mine were the same after Hawkheart took me out herb gathering the first time. Your pads will toughen up. Are you checking for sores, Wormpaw? Shrewpaw was marching toward them, puffing feathers from his muzzle. Stop calling me that, Tallpaw glared at him. Heatherstar made me a moor runner, remember? A real moor runner wouldn't look so tired, Shrewpaw snorted. You were born to be a tunneler. Stick to digging, Wormpaw, and leave moor running to cats with tougher pads.
Chapter 7 Wake up, sleepy slug. Tallpaw felt a paw brush his ear. Blinking, he jerked up his head. Sunshine was streaming under the gorse, flooding his nest. It silhouetted dawn stripe at the den entrance. I didn't think anyone could sleep longer than Shrewpaw. Dawn Stripe flicked her tail. But he's been pacing the entrance with hair flight since the sun touched the heather. He's just showing off, Tallpaw growled under his breath. He hauled himself to his paws. His muscles ached after yesterday's trek, and his pads were still sore. Why hadn't Shrewpaw woken him? They were supposed to be training together. Hurry up, Dawn Stripe turned and stalked away. Pelt pricking with irritation, Tallpaw clambered out of his nest. It wasn't as soft as his nest in the nursery or as warm. The gorse bush that overhung the apprentice's den didn't stop the breeze from swirling in straight over Tallpaw's nest. By leaf bear, it would be freezing. Stagpaw, Doughpaw, and Rypaw had already made nests at the back of the den, pressed against the smooth boulder that held back the roots of the bush. Tall Paw eyed his denmate's nests jealously and decided to collect heather and snagged wool as soon as he got the chance to make his own nest so deep and well protected that no wind could reach through it. Stop dawdling, Tall Paw, Hair Flight called. Shrew Paw was pacing beside his mentor while Dawn Stripe talked quietly with Cloud Runner, muzzles close. Stag Paw and Doe Paw were at the prey heap, sifting through yesterday's catch, and Rye Paw was hauling a wad of sheep's wool toward the elder's den. Everyone's been awake for ages. Tall Paw shook out his pelt and hurried toward Dawn Stripe. He ached all over. My legs hurt, he complained. They need exercise. Don Stripe's gaze flicked toward him briefly before returning to Cloud Runner. But they feel... Don Stripe cut him off. You'll be okay once we're out on the moor. Tallpaw twitched his tail crossly. Palebird would have fussed over him. Sandgorse would have told him that it was growing pains and that he was turning into a fine warrior. Where is Sandgorse? Tallpaw scanned the clearing. He hadn't seen his father since his naming ceremony. He'd gone to his nest straight after training yesterday and was asleep by the time Sandgorse's patrol had returned from the tunnels. You managed to wake up then, Wormpaw. Shrewpaw was staring at him. Yeah, bug breath, Tallpaw hissed back. Dawn Stripe spun around. Only Kit's name call, she snapped. Shrewpaw started it, Tallpaw defended himself. Don Stripe looked at him sternly. Shrewpaw's whiskers twitched. Perhaps Tattlepaw should go back to the nursery. Tallpaw dug his claws into the ground. He wanted to rake Shrewpaw's nose. Don Stripe stepped between them. We're meeting up with the older apprentices later to help with their final assessment. Tallpaw blinked. How? He pictured himself being mauled in a mock battle. They need a lure for their tracking exercise, Don Stripe told him. Shrewpaw wove around Cloud Runner. Can I help too? The pale gray Tom dipped his head. Ask Hare Flight, he turned to Don Stripe. Let's meet at Outlook Rock. Okay, Don Stripe agreed. I want Tallpaw to warm up first. I'm already warm. Tallpot told her. The green leaf sun was hot on his pelt, even though it had hardly lifted above the heather. I meant I want you to stretch your muscles, Don Stripe told him. You'll need to lose yesterday's stiffness before you work with the older apprentices. Tallpaw's pelt burned and not from the sunshine. He glared at Shrewpaw, ready for a stinging comment. A gray pelt slid in front of him, distracting him. Hi, Hickory Nose, mewed Tallpaw. The tunneler padded past Tallpaw without speaking and pushed his way through the entrance tunnel. Sandgorse followed. Tallpaw darted forward. Sandgorse! But Sandgorse didn't seem to hear him. 
Tall Paw stared in surprise as his father ducked into the tunnel and disappeared. Don Stripe's whiskers brushed his ear. He must be thinking about the new tunnel, she murmured. Mist Mouse was saying they've reached a tricky seam of gravel. I guess. Tall Paw stared sadly at the trembling Heather. Were the tunnelers going to treat him like he was from a different clan now? Hair Flight marched past Shrew Paw. Let's get going. Don Stripe followed him. Come on, Tall Paw. Let's race some of that stiffness from your legs. She ducked through the gap. Shrew Paw pushed in after her. Tall Paw followed, wondering if it was possible to race stiffness away. A light breeze whisked his ears as he emerged onto the smooth grass. He scanned the moor for a sign of sand gorse, but his father had already disappeared. Don Stripe's golden tail flashed between two bushes. Tall Paw could hear Paw steps thrumming and raced after her. He zigzagged along the weaving track, narrowing his eyes against the twigs that lashed his face. Would he ever know all the trails on the moor as well as Don Stripe seemed to? She ran ahead, sure pawed, making each twist and turn as easily as a rabbit. Tall Paw felt awkward, jerking around the corners, tripping on roots, and trying not to fall. The trail lightened up ahead, and the heather suddenly opened onto a clearing on the hillside. Don Stripe skidded to a halt. This is where you'll do most of your training. She nodded to the wide sweep of grass. Boulders clustered at the far end of the sheltered space. Hairflight and Shrewpaw burst from the heather behind them and stopped. Hairflight flicked his tail. Three laps, he ordered Shrewpaw. Shrewpaw tore away, following the line of bushes around the edge of the clearing. He sped over the grass, fast as a skimming bird. Tallpaw blinked at Dawnstripe. Me too? Just once around, she told him. Tallpaw haired after Shrewpaw as fast as he could. He didn't want to lag behind his denmate. Take it easy! Don Stripe called after him. You're just warming up, remember? So Shrewpaw. Tallpaw raced harder. His lungs ached. A cramp stabbed his ribs. Shrewpaw was already halfway back. At this rate, the dark brown Tom would lap him by the time he reached Don Stripe. Tallpaw forced himself to keep going. The grass flashed beneath him as he fought for each breath. Shrew Paw slithered past Hair Flight and Dawn Stripe. Tall Paw began to gain ground. Dragging in another breath, he hurtled the last few tail lengths and skidded to a halt beside Dawn Stripe. He collapsed onto the grass, flanks heaving. Fast, huh? He gasped, pleased with his effort. It's not a race, his mentor leaned over him. The best warrior? is the one who's still fighting at the end of the battle. Don't use up all your strength in the first fight. Tallpaw looked up at her, eyes glazed as he panted. Come on, Shrewpaw, Hairflight called to his apprentice. Longer strides. Watch him, Donstripe ordered. See how much land he covers with each step. Watch how he stretches forward each time his paws leave the ground. Speed is vital, but you need to be in control of the speed. She nosed him to his paws. You're fast, but you run like prey, not a hunter. Hairflight was still watching Shrewpaw. Nice paw work, he called as Shrewpaw swept past. Tallpaw felt the wind from his pelt. He watched how Shrewpaw curved his spine with each stride, stretching his forepaws and tucking his hind legs in close before thrusting himself out flat again. Can I try again? He asked Dawnstripe. Got your breath back? Dawnstripe asked. Yes. Don't aim for speed, Dawnstripe warned. You need your strength later. Tallpaw dipped his head and padded away. He broke into a run, not pushing hard at first, but gaining rhythm and speed as he crossed the grass. He 
He focused on each bound, curving his spine the same way Shrewpaw did, and reaching out with his forepaws a little farther before they touched the grass. He pushed harder with every stride until he was aware of nothing but the steady thrumming of his paws and the way his breath fell in time with his pace. He was suddenly moving with ease, as though the wind were carrying him while the grass slid beneath him like air beneath a swallow's wings. Very good, Don Stripe's mew surprised him. He'd completed a circuit of the training ground already, so focused that he hadn't seen her. He pulled up, slowing to a trot before turning and patting to her side. Hair Flight dipped his head. Nice work, Tallpaw. You learn quickly, Don Stripe meowed. Shrewpaw slewed to a halt a few tail lengths away. Not bad for a tunneler. I'm not a tunneler, Tallpaw choked back the words. Hair Flight glanced up the hillside. We should meet the others. Tallpaw followed his gaze. Is Outlook Rock over there? He squinted across the heather, but could see nothing but blue sky arcing over the moor. Don Stripe headed up the slope. I'll show you. Outlook Rock stuck out from the moor top like a snipe's beak. Below it, the land dropped away, the valley so steep and long that Tallpaw couldn't tell whether the white shapes in the meadow below were sheep or dandelions. He padded gingerly over the stone, feeling the wind tug at his pelt as he peered over the edge. The whole world rolled out before him, fading against the clouds on the distant horizon. Dizzy, Tallpaw shrank back. What if a gust of wind lifted him off? The granite beneath his paws was too smooth to grip. Look ahead, not down, Don Stripe warned from behind him. Tallpaw fixed his gaze on the horizon. High stones gleamed palely in the sunshine. Beyond them, mountains nudged at the sky. Movement flickered at the corner of his vision, and he found himself twitching, his gaze flitting from a wind-ruffled tree to a distant monster flashing along a thunderpath. A buzzard swooped in the distance, snatching his attention up to the sky. They're coming! Shrewpaw's call made him turn. Cloud Runner, Aspen Fall, and Lark Splash were leading their apprentices up the slope. Don Stripe beckoned Tallpaw with a flick of her tail, and he hurried to her side as Stagpaw, Rypaw, and Dopaw leaped onto Outlook Rock. The three apprentices looked somber and focused as they lined up along the rock and sat down. What are they doing? Tallpaw whispered to Don Stripe. They're being tested on their observation skills, Don Stripe hissed back. Keep quiet so you don't disturb them. Cloud Runner stood behind Stagpaw. What do you see? He asked his apprentice. Red monster, lapwing diving for insects, a two-leg walking across the thunder path. Stagpaw leaned forward and squinted. Dog running along a hedgerow. Which way? Cloud Runner prompted. Toward the scent line. How long before it reaches it? Long enough for a runner to fetch a patrol from camp. Good. Cloud Runner looked over his shoulder at Aspenfall. Dopaw's turn. Two leg climbing a fence, rogue crossing the thunder path. Tallpaw watched her steadily scan the landscape. His attention had been caught by one movement after another, and his neck ached from jerking his head around. Dopaw seemed to be directing her gaze at each place in turn, picking objects out with fixed concentration before shifting her head. Rypaw was even better. The two-leg place loner is sunning himself on his green patch. There's a heron fishing the stream beside Longwall. Don Stripe leaned down to Tallpaw. Rypaw has the best eyesight in Wind Clan, she whispered. Tallpaw glanced up as a buzzard swooped high overhead. Rypaw's gaze remained trained on the land stretching below her. 
How come they don't get distracted? He asked. Training, Dawnstripe breathed. Lark's splash padded from the rock. Nice work, she told Rypaw. Let's test your hunting skills. Tallpaw felt Dawnstripe press against him. This is where you help out. Tallpaw gulped. How? Cloudrunner paced around the older apprentices as they assembled on the grass, their eyes wide with anticipation. We need to test your tracking skills. His gaze flashed toward Tallpaw. You'll be the rabbit, Tallpaw. Stagpaw, Rypaw, and Dopaw will hunt you. They'll catch Tallpaw easily, Shrewpaw snorted. I should be the rabbit. Hair Flight narrowed his eyes. You're good at open running, Shrewpaw, but in the heather I think Tallpaw will have the advantage. Shrewpaw bristled. Why? He's smaller, Hair Flight explained, and more nimble. Tallpaw's heart was speeding. His den mates were going to hunt him? He leaned closer to Dawnstripe. What will they do when they catch me? He asked in a nervous whisper. Dawnstripe purred. Don't worry, they're being tested on how they pursue you, she whispered. They need to work together to track you down. Aspenfall and Cloudrunner will be watching to see how they manage to stay out of sight while still giving one another tail signals. So I just need to keep running. Tallpaw's pelt tingled. He knew how to run. Cloudrunner flicked his tail. Head for that boulder, he told Tallpaw. Tallpaw narrowed his eyes. Beyond a vast stretch of heather and gorse, he could just make out a tall stone standing against the sky. Try to reach it without being caught. Cloudrunner crossed the grass and whispered into Tallpaw's ear. Switch course a couple of times. Include a double back. Make it as hard as you can for them to run you down. Tallpaw nodded, dazed. At the last sunrise, he had been a kid, living with his mother in the nursery. This was his first ever taste of warrior training, and he was already being lined up as prey for bigger, stronger, faster cats. It's my second day. How am I going to outwit three trained apprentices? Chapter 8 Tall Paw felt Dawnstripe's tail sweep his spine. You'll do fine, she murmured. Just keep moving and think like a fox. A fox? Tallpaw had no idea how a fox thought. He'd never even seen one. Be smart. Dawnstripe nosed him away. Tallpaw slid into the nearest bank of heather. Quiet as he could, he darted between two stems, hoping he'd find a rabbit trail that would lead closer to the rock. The gap opened for a few tail lengths, but ended in a thick gorse stump. Tallpaw's heart quickened. The apprentices would find him straight away. Shrewpaw would laugh at him for the rest of the day, for the rest of their lives, probably. Tallpaw turned and pushed through the thick heather branches, wincing as he forced his way past. He struggled onward until finally he burst out into a gap between the bushes. A sharp tang touched his nose. Tiny dirt berries. He'd found a rabbit track. The trail led among the stems. Tallpaw raced along it. Instinctively, he kept low, crouching down so that his spine didn't set the heather quivering and give his position away. Am I going the right way? Where's the rock? He couldn't see it through the heather, but if he stretched up his head to get his bearings, the others would spot him. He tasted the air, hoping for a clue. Pete and heather, and the familiar scent of stagpaw. Was the young Tom close? Tallpaw pushed on harder, twisting his ears back for sounds of pursuit. Paw steps thrummed behind him. Switch course. Cloud Runner's instruction echoed in his ears as the path forked ahead. Tallpaw swerved, taking the trail that sloped upward. He could feel the ground trembling. More paw steps pounded behind. 
The apprentices were on his tail. The path sloped steeply, growing rocky, which forced Tall Paw to slow down so he didn't trap his paw and break his leg. He told himself that his pursuers would have to slow down too. After a frantic scramble over the stones, the trail emerged from the heather onto a grassy hillside. Tall Paw flattened his ears and ran faster. Remembering his practice earlier, he lengthened his stride. The grass blurred beneath him. Snatching a breath, he glanced over his shoulder. Stagpaw exploded from the heather. Rypaw and Dopaw fanned out behind. Tallpaw saw Stagpaw's tail flick one way, then the other. They were planning to surround him. He swerved sideways, his paws skidding on the grass as he switched direction. Cutting across the apprentice's path, he blocked their attempt to trap him from on both sides. Come on, Stagpaw, think! Aspenfall called from higher up the slope. Wind streamed through Tallpaw's whiskers. Exhilaration pulsed in his belly. He was running fast as a bird, but the apprentices were gaining on him. Double back. He was smaller than his pursuers, and that made him nimble. He slowed gradually at first. They'll think they've outrun me. Tallpaw glanced over his shoulder, pleased to see triumph flash in Rypaw's eyes. She was in the lead now, Stagpaw racing just behind, matching her stride step for step. Beside him, Dopaw veered away. Tallpaw saw the she-cat narrow her eyes. She's going to try to overtake me and block my path. Suddenly, he slammed his paws hard into the grass, he spun around, leaving deep scars in the turf, and charged straight back toward the apprentices. Their eyes stretched wide in astonishment. Surprised, huh? Ears flat, tail streaking behind, Tall Paw raced down the slope through the gap between Stagpaw and Dopaw. Don't let a kid outpace you! Cloud Runner yowled from above them. Kit, I'm an apprentice! Tall Paw sprinted down the hillside. The rock flashed at the edge of his vision. He'd have to change course to reach it. Stagpaw, Rypaw, and Dopaw were still trying to turn, slithering clumsily on the grass behind him. Tall Paw needed to make a break for the rock before they found their footing. He darted sideways, his hind paws slipping out from under him. His belly hit the ground, but he scrambled up and kept running. Stagpaw was pulling closer. He could hear the young Tom's breath. Rypaw and Dopaw pounded at his tail. He was closing in on the rock. If he could just keep running, he'd make it. Excitement thrilled through him. Then Paws grasped his flanks. A swift push sent him sideways. The world spun as Tallpaw tumbled over the grass and skidded to a halt. Great chase, Stagpaw leaned over him. Are you okay? Dopaw pushed past her brother and looked anxiously at Tallpaw. Rypaw was just behind, panting too hard to speak. Yeah, I'm fine. Tallpaw scrambled to his paws, struggling to catch his breath. Good work! Cloud Runner ran across the grass toward them, Dawnstripe at his heels. You nearly made it! Tallpaw's mentor skidded to a halt in front of him, her eyes shining. Stagpaw nudged him with a shoulder. I thought you'd outrun us for a moment, he panted. Aspenfall, Lark Splash, and Hare Flight pounded across the grass with Shrewpaw trotting behind much less eagerly. Hare Flight reached them first. That was impressive. Shrewpaw glared at Tallpaw. I would have made it to the rock. Dopaw swished her tail. I don't think so, small paws. Tallpaw wanted to purr, but he was still trying to get enough air inside him. Cloud Runner jerked his nose toward four trees. Let's test your hunting skills. Ears pricked, looking as if he'd done nothing more strenuous than chase a leaf, Stagpaw led the way down the slope. As the apprentices disappeared into the heather with their mentors, Don Stripe tasted the air. It smells like they'll find good hunting there. 
tall paw stuck out his tongue. He couldn't taste anything but the wind. Dawn Stripe shook out her golden pelt. Don't worry, tall paw. Before long, you'll be able to scent prey halfway across the moor. I'm hungry. True paw glanced hopefully at the thick line of trees running along the bottom of the moor. Can we hunt too? Battle moves first, Hair Flight told him. With tall paw? Shrew paw's tail drooped. He won't know any. Hair Flight glared at his apprentice. Then teach him some. Shrew paw stomped across the grass and stood a tail length away. His brown pelt looked like a stray piece of wood against the windswept moor. Dawnstripe swept Tallpaw forward with her tail. He'll need to learn defensive moves first, she called to Shrewpaw. Attack him, but don't forget that it's his first session. She nodded to Tallpaw. The simplest defense is to raise your forepaws. Don't jab out wildly. Focus on protecting your muzzle and pushing your attacker away. Tallpaw nodded, trying to remember everything Dawnstripe was saying. He could still feel his heart pounding from the chase. He curled his hind claws into the grass to steady himself, then fixed his gaze on Shrewpaw. Shrewpaw's eyes glittered. Ready? Tallpaw nodded. Letting out a ferocious yowl, Shrewpaw flew toward him. Tallpaw gasped and lifted his paws. He was too slow. Claws raked his nose. With a yelp, Tallpaw tripped over his own tail and rolled onto the grass. Shrewpaw! Hair Flight's mew was sharp. Dawnstripe warned you that it's Tallpaw's first time. As Tallpaw scrambled to his paws, he saw Shrewpaw roll his eyes. Why do I get stuck training with a kit? Tallpaw faced him, nose stinging. I'm not a kit, he hissed. Try again. Shrewpaw crouched, wiggling his hindquarters. Tallpaw watched him. As Shrewpaw leaped, he reared and lifted his forepaws quicker this time. Shrewpaw hit him more slowly, and Tallpaw found it easy to flip him away with a sharp shove. As Shrewpaw rolled dramatically onto the grass beside him, Tallpaw felt a twinge of satisfaction. Then claws jabbed his ribs. Tallpaw gasped. Shrewpaw had thrust out a hind leg as he rolled and caught him in the side. Sorry, Shrewpaw jumped up. It was an accident. Yeah, right, Tallpaw narrowed his eyes. I bet we're supposed to keep our claws sheathed in practice. Try it again, Dawnstripe encouraged. This time, move as you push him away, Tallpaw. You need to land ready for the next attack. Tallpaw nodded and faced Shrewpaw once more. Shrewpaw's tail tip was flicking. You still think I'm a tunneler? Tallpaw flexed his claws, fighting the urge to unsheathe them. I'll show you. Shrewpaw sprang into the air. Tallpaw froze for a moment, then, seeing daylight beneath the young Tom's belly, he ducked beneath it and bucked like a rabbit. He felt Shrewpaw's weight on his back and pushed his spine into his denmate's belly. Shrewpaw yelped as Tallpaw tossed him backward. Tallpaw turned on his hind paws. Shrewpaw was writhing on the grass. Tallpaw reared over him and Shrewpaw stared up, his eyes wide with shock. Four paws raised, Tallpaw showed his teeth for a moment before dropping onto all fours and padding away. How was that? He asked Dawnstripe. Dawnstripe blinked at him. Not exactly what I expected. It was excellent, Hair Flight purred. Great work, Tallpaw. Shrewpaw clambered to his paws, scowling. He was supposed to be practicing defense moves, not attack. Tallpaw prickled. Everything he did seemed to annoy Shrewpaw. He lifted his chin. I was defending myself. It's not my fault if you can't keep your balance. You cheated, Wormpaw. Shrewpaw stalked past him and pushed into the heather. Can we get something to eat now? 
Don Stripe and Hareflight exchanged glances before Hareflight hurried to catch up with his apprentice. Well done, Tallpaw. Don Stripe fell in beside him as they followed the others along a narrow trail. Thanks. Satisfaction warmed Tallpaw's pelt. Don't worry about Shrewpaw, Don Stripe reassured him. He's used to training with older apprentices. Hair flight will have a word with him about his attitude. A tabby can't change his stripes, Tallpaw sniffed. Shrewpaw was born with a burr in his fur. I'll just have to put up with it. Come and share this rabbit, Barkpaw called from beside the hunting stones as Tallpaw ducked into camp. The scent of fresh prey reached Tallpaw's tongue. He bounded over the tussocks and stopped in the patch of sunshine where Barkpaw was tearing flesh from a rabbit carcass. Suddenly realizing how tired he was, Tallpaw flopped down beside his friend. Here, Barkpaw shoved the rabbit toward Tallpaw. Thanks. Tallpaw leaned forward and took a bite. How is training? Barkpaw asked. Tallpaw glanced at Shrewpaw, who was sniffing disdainfully at a vole on the prey heap. He wished he could tell Barkpaw what a pain in the tail Shrewpaw had been. But they were littermates, and a true warrior didn't complain about his clanmates. It was great. The memory of chasing across the grass with the apprentices at his heels thrilled Tallpaw once more. He felt a stab of delight as he remembered flipping Shrewpaw onto his back. I learned a lot. Barkpaw took another bite of rabbit. I learned how to make a dressing for scratches today, he told Tallpaw with his mouth full. It draws infection out of rotten wounds. Tallpaw's belly tightened. That sounds, he searched for words while he fought back queasiness. Interesting. I'm glad I'm training as a warrior. I made it for Whiteberry's ear, Barkpaw kept on chewing. He's got an infected tick bite. I had a juniper sap. That'll loosen the tick. It was so swollen I thought its skin would burst. Tallpaw stared at him, the scent of rabbit suddenly making him feel sick. How's Hawkheart, he asked, changing the subject. He's a really good teacher, Barkpaw mewed. It's hard keeping up, but I'm learning so much. Tallpaw noticed Shrewpaw heading toward them. Ignoring his queasiness, he took a bite of rabbit. Shrewpaw reached them as he was swallowing. The dark brown Tom flung a mouse onto the ground. Have you cured anyone yet? He asked settling down beside Barkpaw. Barkpaw swallowed. I won't know until tomorrow. Tallpaw pulled another mouthful of flesh from the rabbit. Shrewpaw munched on his mouse. Barkpaw glanced uneasily from one to the other before blurting out, it must be fun training together. Tallpaw met Shrewpaw's gaze, wondering what the brown Tom would say. Shrewpaw shrugged. It's okay. Tallpaw blinked, surprised at Shrewpaw's reply. Yeah, he agreed. Why should they make Barkpaw worry that they weren't getting along? He ate till his belly was full, then heaved himself to his paws. I'm going to stretch my legs, he told Barkpaw. I don't want to stiffen up. Dawn Stripe's taking me out again later. He nodded at Shrewpaw and headed across camp. Palebird was crouching outside the nursery. Meadowslip paced beside her. The Gray Queen had only just moved to the nursery, swollen with Hickory Nose's kits. Her belly swayed as she padded back and forth, tail twitching and ears flicking as if she was too restless to sit still. Palebird gazed blankly across the camp. Tallpaw frowned. Why wasn't his mother restless too? Didn't she ever wish she were out on the moor or back in the tunnels? Wasn't she bored, stuck in camp? Tallpaw stopped beside her. You should come and watch me train. What, dear? Pelbert looked up at him distractedly. It'd be good for you to get out of the camp. 
Brackenwing leaped out of the meeting hollow and hurried over. Don't bother Palebird, she warned. She needs rest. Tallpaw scowled. She's been resting for six moons. She must have recovered from kidding by now. She hasn't been sleeping well, Meadowslip explained. Tell me about it later, Tallpaw, Palebird murmured. I'm sure you've had fun. Tallpaw's tail whipped crossly, and he slouched away from the nursery, eyeing Barkpaw and Shrewpaw. They were chattering like thrushes now that he was gone. Behind him, Tallpaw could hear Meadowslip talking to Palebird and Brackenwing. Do you think the visitors will return this green leaf? Tallpaw's ears pricked. Visitors? I'm sure they will, Brackenwing answered the young queen. I can't remember a time that they didn't. Tallpaw stopped and sat down. He needed a wash after his meal. He might as well wash here, where he could listen to the queens. I hope we hen made it through Leaf Bear, Brackenwing lowered her voice. She was very frail last time we saw her. Whiteberry will be disappointed if she doesn't come, Meadowslip commented. Tallpaw cleaned his muzzle with a freshly licked paw. Brackenwing purred. We hen and Whiteberry could swap stories from dawn to dusk. There was talk of her settling with the clan once. Settling? With us? Meadowslip sounded shocked. How would we explain her to the other clans? Wind Clan wouldn't be the first to take in a rogue, Brackenwing pointed out. But we're the only clan that lets visitors share our dens and our prey every green leaf, Meadowslip replied. What would the other clans say? What if they thought we were training rogues to attack them? Tallpaw lapped the fur along his spine as it lifted with interest. He'd never heard of visitors living with the clan. Why hadn't anyone mentioned them before? Who cares what the other clans say? Brackenwing sniffed. They huddle in the marshes and woods, hiding like prey from the wind and the sun. We live with our tails touching the sky. If we want to share our territory, that's our choice. Tallpaw, Donstripe called from the camp entrance. Tallpaw jumped to his paws, his fur still wet from washing. Donstripe's whiskers twitched as she beckoned him with her tail. Put your tongue away and let's practice some battle moves. Tallpaw hurried after her as she ducked through the heather. Who are the Greenleaf visitors? He asked as he caught up to her on the smooth grass outside camp. Donstripe paused, her eyes narrowing. Who told you about the Greenleaf visitors? Meadowslip and Brackenwing were talking, he told her. You shouldn't eavesdrop. I wasn't, Tallpaw protested. They weren't exactly whispering. He frowned at Donstripe. Are the visitors a secret? We don't talk about them when they're not here, and especially not outside the clan. Donstripe headed along the sheep trail that wound through the gorse patch. Tallpaw trotted after her. Why do they come? Donstripe didn't look back. They just always have. Do they live in camp with us? Just for Greenleaf? Do they join patrols and hunt for the clan? Sometimes. Tallpaw stopped. Are they rogues? He stared after Dawnstripe. Why was she acting like he'd discovered a secret? If they came every Greenleaf, he was bound to know eventually. Dawnstripe halted and turned around. I guess you could call them rogues. They don't follow the clan code. Do we have to let them stay with us? Tallpaw unsheathed his claws. Did Wind Clan really let a band of rogues take over their camp and their prey every green leaf? Donstripe swished her tail. Of course not. We choose to let them stay and make them welcome. But rogues are bad, aren't they? Tallpaw tipped his head on one side. Not all rogues are bad. Donstripe kept going along the trail. Not these rogues. 
Tallpaw trotted after her. Then why is it such a secret? It's best the other clans don't know. Why? Is Wind Clan breaking the warrior code? You sound like a kit. Don Stripe nosed her way out onto a stretch of grass. Stop asking questions and show me that move you used on Shrewpaw this morning. Chapter 9 Tallpaw paced the camp entrance. Dew soaked his paws. The sun was just lifting over the horizon. Its rays spilled over the heather, setting the purple flowers alight until the moor glowed. Tallpaw was the first cat awake, eager to leave for the dawn patrol. He'd poked Shrewpaw as he padded out of the den, but the dark brown apprentice was still half asleep. Through the gap beneath the gorse, Tallpaw could see him blinking groggily over the edge of his nest. The long grass rustled beside the meeting hollow, and Don Stripe slid out. She yawned and stretched, then padded over the tussocks. Good morning, Tallpaw. Hi, Don Stripe. Tallpaw flicked his tail. Are we going to check all the borders? This was his first Dawn Patrol. Don Stripe shook her head. That would take too long. She jerked her muzzle toward the long grass where more cats were emerging into the open. Stag leap, rye stalk, and lark splash will patrol the moor edge and gorge with us. Hare flight, shrew paw, doe spring, and apple dawn will remark the borders near four trees and shadow clan. Shrew paw padded, yawning from the apprentice's den. Is there time to raid the prey heap before we leave? His belly growled. Tallpaw glanced across the clearing. There was only a stiff vole and a squashed mouse in the pile. Perhaps you'll catch something while you're patrolling. Don Stripe's ear twitched. No hunting until the borders have been checked. Shrewpaw's belly rumbled louder. Heather Star will send out a hunting patrol soon. Don Stripe tipped her head sympathetically. There'll be prey on the heap by the time you get back. How can you be hungry? Tallpaw was too excited to eat. He patted around Dawn Stripe. Shrewpaw sat down and began to wash his face. I've done Dawn Patrol before, remember? You can't be bored of it. Tallpaw tasted the air, wondering what the moor was like this early. What if we see an intruder? He asked Dawn Stripe. Can we chase it? Lark Splash is leading the patrol. Dawn Stripe meowed. You'll have to ask her. Lark Splash was already heading toward them. Tall Paw raced to meet her. If we spot an intruder, can we chase it? It depends. Lark Splash padded past him. Tall Paw bounced after her. On what? On whether it's a sheep or a dog or a rogue. Lark Splash stopped beside Dawnstripe. If it's a threat to the clan, then we chase it. Tallpaw's imagination began to whirl. What if they surprised a river clan patrol trying to invade the moor? What if a stray dog needed to be chased off? When are we leaving? He mewed to Dawn Stripe. Lark Splash answered. When Rye Stalk and Stag Leap stop gossiping and join us. The young warriors stood at the top of the meeting hollow with Doe Spring. They'd been warriors for a half moon, Tallpaw had watched their ceremony, secretly proud that he'd helped with their assessment. He'd nearly outrun them then, and he was even faster now. With a little more training, he was sure he'd be the fastest cat in the clan. Rye stalk! Lark Splash flicked her tail, and the gray she-cat looked up. Coming! Rye stalk leaped over the tussocks with Stag Leap close behind. Sorry! She skidded to a halt on the wet grass. Stag Leap's eyes brightened. Is Tallpaw patrolling with us? Yes. Tallpaw puffed out his chest. Want a race? Stag Leap plucked the ground excitedly. Yes, please. Lark Splash stepped between them. We're patrolling, not racing, she meowed sternly. I want your attention focused on the borders. 
Tallpaw glanced at his paws, peeking at Stagley from under his fur. The dark brown Tom's whiskers were twitching with amusement. Sorry, Lark Splash. He straightened his tail respectfully, but his whiskers kept twitching. Tallpaw swallowed a purr. No racing, I promise. No having fun whatsoever on the dawn patrol. Huffing, Lark Splash turned away and headed through the entrance. Rystock brushed past Tallpaw. She doesn't mean to be bad-tempered, she whispered. She's just not a dawn cat. I know the feeling, Shrewpaw stared blearily at the rest of his patrol as they headed toward him. You'll feel better once the wind's in your fur, Rystock promised as she followed Dawnstripe through the entrance. Outside, the air was sweet with heather blossom. The sun was climbing into a pale blue sky. Tallpaw narrowed his eyes against the glare. He could make out pockets of mist pooling in dips and hollows across the moor. Heat would burn them away before long. It was going to be another scorching day. Tallpaw felt the breeze in his tail. Which way? He asked Lark Splash. She was already heading up slope toward the high moor. We'll reset the markers along the thunder path first. But there's no clan beyond that border. Tallpaw caught up to her, weaving around a clump of heather to stay near her. Why do we have to mark it? There are rogues and loners out there, Lark Splash reminded him. It's only fair to warn them that they've reached clan territory. I thought we welcomed rogues. Tallpaw glanced over his shoulder at Dawnstripe. She was watching the horizon. Was she looking out for their green leaf visitors? Stagleap caught up. I know you said no racing. He turned his round amber gaze on Lark Splash. But we're not at the border yet. Rystock popped up beside her brother. We'd get there quicker if we ran. Lark Splash rolled her eyes. Okay then, but don't get too excited and be careful of the thunder path. We're not paws anymore, Stagleap retorted. Tall paw is, Lark Splash reminded him. So be careful. Stagleap caught Tall Paw's eye. Ready? Ready! Tall Paw tensed, feeling energy surge beneath his pelt. Go! Rystock crashed away through the heather. Stagleap chose a wider course, skirting the bushes and charging for the stretch of grass beyond. Grass makes for easier running. Tall Paw raced after Stagleap. His paws skidded in the dew as he swerved around the heather. Rye stalk exploded from the bushes beside him as he veered onto Stagleap's trail. She whisked past him with a yowl of triumph. Tall Paw dug in his claws and pushed harder. The ground sloped steeply ahead of them. Rystock pounded over the grass, but she couldn't match her brother's strength. Stag Leap streaked higher. Stretching farther with each stride, Tallpaw found his rhythm until he was skimming the ground, hardly touching it with his paws. Wind streamed through his whiskers as he ran past Rystock. Stag Leap was only a tail length ahead. The top of the moor loomed above him, the blue sky stretching out endlessly beyond. As Tallpaw drew closer, Stagleap crested the rise and began to charge down the other side. Tallpaw glanced back. Rystock was lagging, but she put on a spurt of energy to crest the rise and hurtled down after them. The slope gave Stagleap an extra burst of speed. His wide shoulders and stocky build might slow him uphill, but here he could use his strength to race harder than ever. Tall Paw lengthened his stride, but Stagpaw was pulling farther ahead. As the slope flattened out beside the thunder path, the young warrior slowed to a halt and lifted his tail in victory. Nice try, Stagleap puffed as Tall Paw reached him. I'll get you one day, Tallpaw panted. Rystock pulled up beside them. I'm hopeless on grass. She struggled to get her breath. 
I'd rather sprint over rabbit trails. You're better at twists and turns, Stag Leap agreed. Next time, we'll race through Heather. The thunder path glittered in the sunshine a few tail lengths away. Tallpaw looked along it as he caught his breath. He'd never been this close. Where are the monsters? It was deserted. They come later, Stag Leap told him. Rystock glanced over her shoulder. We've passed the scent line. Tallpaw tasted the air. The acrid tang of the thunder path mingled with stale wind clan scent. Let's start resetting the markers. Stag Leap turned back. Before Lark Splash gets hissy. As Tallpaw followed, he spotted Dawn Stripe's golden pelt flash farther up the slope. She was bounding toward him, her tail bushed. I don't want to see you so near to the thunder path again, she snapped as she reached him. Tallpaw stared at her in surprise. But it's deserted. Monsters travel as fast as birds, and they're bigger than you can imagine. Dawn Stripe glared at him. But it's... Dawn Stripe narrowed her eyes. When I tell you something, you listen. You don't argue. Tallpaw's throat tightened with anger, but he swallowed it back. I can't wait to be a warrior. Tallpaw helped the young moor runners to mark the border that ran level with the thunder path, following the high moor toward the gorge. I'm bored. Tallpaw stopped to spray another clump of heather. Wearily, he watched Lark Splash double back to follow yet another scent trail that had crossed the boundary. At this rate, they'd be marking borders till nightfall. Is that River Clan? Dawnstripe called after Lark Splash. The tortoiseshell warrior sniffed the heather. Just a two leg. Did they have a dog with them? Rystock hurried to taste the scent. Lark Splash shook her head. Stag Leap climbed a hummock and lifted his chin. There's been no dog on this part of the moor in a moon. Rystock looked at him. Since you started patrolling, I suppose. Can we keep moving? Tallpaw's legs itched. He wanted to run. Why couldn't they find a fresh rabbit scent? Something he could chase. Stag Leap bounded from the hummock and marched along the scent line, tail high. They're scared of my scent. Who are? Tallpaw was puzzled. Rabbits? Stag Leap flashed him a look. Dogs! Tallpaw snorted, ducking as Stag Leap launched a play attack and swiped his ears. We're patrolling the border, Donstripe reminded them sternly. Tallpaw frowned. Weren't they allowed to have any fun? He stopped and sprayed a gorse stem half-heartedly. In the distance, he could hear water. At least they were nearly at the gorge. After that, they could head for camp and do some proper training. He followed Lark Splash as she disappeared into a patch of heather. He pushed through the whippy branches, the rest of the patrol at his heels. The path wound through hummocks, spiky twigs pressing in on all sides. The pollen-heavy blossom made Tallpaw sneeze, and he was relieved when the heather opened onto grass near the cliff top. Lark Splash, Rystock, and Dawnstripe fanned out and sniffed at the scent line that ran along the top of the gorge. Tallpaw crept forward and peered over the edge. Greenleaf had calmed the water, and it flowed smoothly far below winding between the cliffs. Is it deep? He asked Stagleep. Stagleep shrugged. How would I know? Talpaw scanned the sheer rock face, spotting a narrow ledge at the water's edge. It ran the whole length of the gorge, opening out at the end onto grassland. Have you ever been down there? Stagleep shook his head. It's too dangerous in Leaf Bear. In New Leaf... There's snow melt and the river covers it. But it's a good route to get to the two leg bridge without being seen by River Clan. Tallpaw nodded toward the wooden pathway spanning the river, just visible beyond the gorge. Are you planning to invade River Clan territory? Stagleap teased. As he spoke, 
Tallpaw felt a faint shudder in the ground beneath him. His fur lifted along his spine. What was that? Before Stag Leap could answer, yowls echoed behind them. Tallpaw spun around, scanning the moor. He could see nothing but birds swooping across the heather. Lark Splash tasted the air. The yowls sounded again, deep and hollow, strangely muffled. Rystock's gray fur stood on end. What is that? Tallpaw darted to the edge of the gorge and looked over. Was someone calling from the bottom? It's coming from here! Dawnstripe was sniffing at a rabbit hole a few tail lengths away. She backed away as the yowls grew louder. Sand gorse burst out of the hole. Fur spiked up, eyes wide. He glanced over his shoulder as Mist Mouse hurtled out on his heels. Are you okay? He circled his mud streaked tunnel mate, sniffing her anxiously. I'm fine, she panted. Her pelt was thick with mud. Sandgorse stuck his head down the hole and yowled. Tall Paw pricked his ears as distant yowls sounded back. They're safe. Sandgorse straightened up. He seemed to notice Lark Splash for the first time. Just a cave in. The others are safe. Hickory Nose and Woolly Tail are experts. They'll find their way out through a lower entrance if they need to. He shook out his pelt. Tall Paw rushed over to his father. What happened? Sandgorse touched his nose to Tall Paw's head. Too much sunshine, he explained matter of factly. Makes the soil shrink. Rocks drop and we get cave-ins. He looked at the wide blue sky. We could sure use a few days of rain. Tall Paul winced. What if Sandgorse had been caught in the cave-in? In the last half moon, he'd been aware of more and more distance between himself and his father. Sandgorse spoke to him, but not often, and not with the warmth he'd had before. If he could just see how well Tall Paw was doing with his training, he would understand that he had chosen the right path, and everything would be okay again. Sandgorse padded away, weaving between Dawnstripe and Stag Leap. Are you patrolling the borders? We've nearly finished, Dawnstripe told him. No sign of intruders. The tunneler gazed across the heather. We've been digging all night. Rystock blinked at him. Aren't you tired? Sandgorse's eyes shone. We're so close to breaking through to the gorge. His ears twitched excitedly. I'm not resting till it's done. Mist Mouse peered down the tunnel. What about the cave-in? We'll clear it in no time. Sandgorse nosed past her, his mew echoing as he stuck his head into the hole. The soil's light. It'll be easy to burrow through. He ducked out and looked at Dawnstripe. This is the perfect time to give Tallpaw some tunneling experience. Tallpaw's pelt bristled. He forced it flat. But we're patrolling the borders. Sandgorse kept his gaze on Dawnstripe. You said you'd nearly finished. Dawnstripe glanced at Tallpaw. Heatherstar does want every warrior to spend a day underground, she conceded. At least a day. There was an edge to Sandgorse's mew. How will more runners appreciate the importance of the tunnels if they don't know what it's like to be underground? Of course. Dawnstripe shifted her paws. Please, no, Tallpaw begged her silently. Then it's settled. Sandgorse beckoned Tallpaw with a flick of his tail. Tallpaw looked hopefully at Dawnstripe. Is it? You might as well go with him. Dawnstripe dipped her head. When you're finished, come and find me in camp. Okay. Swallowing, Tallpaw padded toward his father. The rabbit hole loomed in front of him like a black mouth sucking him in. There can't be more than one cave in today, surely. Sandgorse purred. I'm glad you finally have a chance to see what tunneling's all about. For the first time in a half moon, he gazed at Tallpaw with pride. Tallpaw gritted his teeth. He couldn't let his father down now. 
I'm looking forward to it, he lied. Perhaps once he was underground, he'd understand why his father thought being a tunneler was so special. Chapter 10 You first, Mist Mouse. Sandgorse stood aside to let the pale tabby she-cat scramble into the burrow. Behind her, Tallpaw paused. Go on, Sandgorse urged. Don't let the darkness put you off. Remember you have ears and whiskers as well as eyes. Tallpaw crept in. The earth was loose beneath his paws, and he unsheathed his claws, digging them in to stop himself from sliding as the tunnel sloped steeply down. Blackness wrapped around him as the entrance faded behind. Tallpaw strained to see the walls of the tunnel or where he was placing his feet, but no light eased the darkness. He could hear his father behind him, Sandgorse's breath warm on his tail as the air at his muzzle turned cold. Tallpaw's pelt, hot from the sun a few moments ago, felt the chill, and he bushed out his fur. Sandgorse purred. If you think this is cold, wait till we're deeper. Tallpaw tried not to imagine it. Listen. Sandgorse paused. Tallpaw stood still. He could hear Mist Mouse's fur brushing the walls ahead. Wait, Mist Mouse, Sandgorse called. Her paw steps stilled. Can you hear it? Sandgorse asked. Tallpaw pricked his ears. Hear what? Keep listening. Tallpaw strained to hear, closing his eyes to block out the stifling darkness. Muffled paw steps sounded at the edge of his hearing. That's your patrol, heading along the gorge, Sandgorse mewed softly. How do you know? Tallpaw whispered. Three sets of paw steps heading away from us. Tallpaw was impressed. It could have been rabbits, he suggested. No. Sandgorse shifted his paws. They thump, they don't patter. Can you tell if it's sheep? Of course. Their steps are harder, while a dog's resonate more deeply in the earth. Mist Mouse moved ahead of them, stirring the darkness with thicker shadows. Your father can tell Thunder Clan paw steps from Wind Clan she told Tallpaw with a hint of pride. Sandgorse's tail whisked the side of the tunnel. ThunderClan high step like deer, he growled. When they pass overhead on the way to the Moonstone, they prance over us like they own the moor. Typical ThunderClan, Mist Mouse huffed. Sandgorse snorted. They have no idea we can track them from underground, we know exactly when they arrive and when they leave Wind Clan territory. We'd know if they dared stop to hunt, Mist Mouse added. Tallpaw felt a nudge from behind. Let's get going, Sandgorse prompted. Hickory Nose and Woolly Tail are probably already digging through the cave in from the other side. They'll need our help. Tallpaw blinked, wishing his eyes would adjust to the darkness, but without a spark of light, he began to realize that he was utterly blind here. Mist Mouse's paws scurried ahead and Tallpaw followed, pressing back the queasy feeling in his belly. Sandgorse won't let anything happen to me. Tallpaw's whiskers dragged along the tunnel sides, sending shivers through his fur. A sudden gap in the wall on one side surprised him, along with the blast of cold air that struck his flank. That tunnel leads toward the high moor, Sandgorse told him. Do you know where you are all the time? Tallpaw was amazed. He felt as helpless as a mouse, as though the earth had swallowed him like prey. Every tunneler knows each twist and turn, Sandgorse meowed. We can get to any part of our territory from here and cross any border. Tallpaw's thoughts quickened. Having the tunnels meant that Wind Clan could thwart any invasion and outwit any enemy. No wonder the tunnelers defended their skills so fiercely. Has Heatherstar been in the tunnels? He asked. She comes on patrol occasionally, Sandgorse replied. 
but she doesn't really understand the darkness or the power it gives to a warrior. She's a moor runner who can only imagine hunting and fighting over ground. I can hear them, Mist Mouse slowed down. Tall Paw nearly bumped into her. Stopping clumsily, he strained his ears and heard muffled mews ahead. He felt Sandgorse press behind him. Make way, Tall Paw. Tall Paw squeezed against the side of the passage to let his father pass. They're digging, Sandgorse reported. We should start work this side and meet them in the middle. Tall Paw heard Mist Mouse begin scooping earth with her front paws. The tunnel was wider here. Tall Paw could feel space around his whiskers. There was enough room for Sandgorse and Mist Mouse to work side by side. We always work in twos. Sandgorse told Tallpaw, pushing a heap of dirt back toward him. If there's a cave-in, you never leave your companion. It's the most important rule of tunneling. Another cat's life is as precious as your own. Never forget it for a moment. Mist Mouse chimed in. One tunneler dies. Two tunnelers survive. Tallpaw reached for the earth Sandgorse had kicked back to him. What do I do with this? Surely it was dumb just to fill up the space behind. Spread it out, Sandgorse told him, as thin as you can, even if it means dragging it right back up the tunnel. Tallpaw was still pushing loose soil around when he heard a stone scraping earth. He felt its hardness against his muzzle as Sandgorse pushed it back toward him. How do I get rid of stones? Tallpaw called. Press it into a crevice if you can find one. Sandgorse meowed over his shoulder. Keep it close. We never get rid of stones. They're useful for shoring up walls. Tallpaw grabbed the stone in his paws. It was bigger than the sparrow-sized rocks he'd practiced on as a kid, but he heaved it backward, grunting at the effort. You're always stronger than you think. Sandgorse's lesson came back to him, and it was true. Even in the cramped space, Tallpaw found he could tug the stone back up the tunnel until he felt a dent in the earth wall. Pushing hard, he pressed the stone into the earth, then returned to haul some more of the soil that Sandgorse and Mist Mouse had dug out. Scrabbling with his forepaws, Tallpaw dragged a pile of earth backward, leaving a trail of loose dirt in his wake. His paws were clogged with grit, and he could feel soil deep in his pelt, Fighting the instinct to wash it out, he kept hauling earth, spreading it back up the tunnel. Each time he hurried back for another load, he trampled the loose earth harder into the tunnel floor. As he reached for another pile, he suddenly realized that he'd forgotten he was working in the dark. And he was warm. They're close, Sandgorse called excitedly. Can you hear them, Tallpaw? Tallpaw listened and heard Wooly Tail's growl. Hickory Nose answered, his gruff mew echoing beyond the wall of dirt. Tall Paw's pelt pricked. Won't it collapse again if we clear away the blockage? All the earth's fallen that's going to fall, Sandgorse reassured him. How do you know? Listen. Sandgorse scraped back more pawfuls of dirt, then halted. Do you hear loose dirt? Or falling stones? No, Tallpaw felt a quiver of relief. And there's no creaking above, Mist Mouse added. The earth will hold. As she spoke, Tallpaw felt fresh air on his whiskers. Sandgorse! Woolly Tail's delighted mew echoed around the walls of the tunnel. Is Hickory Nose all right? Mist Mouse asked. I'm fine, Hickory Nose called from farther down the tunnel. Great. Tallpaw felt his father's tail swish past his nose. Now we can get back to finding the gorge. Tallpaw tasted the air. I smell heather. The sweet scent of blossom touched his tongue. Sandgorse's tail flicked past his nose. There's an air hole ahead, he explained. A small crack up through the earth to the moor. Tallpaw strained his eyes and saw shapes in the darkness. Woolly Tail's spine, Hickory Nose's ears silhouetted against it. Light and air. 
Tallpaw felt a rush of excitement. Let's head for the river, Mist Mouse urged. Are you still trying to tunnel through the clay seam to get to the river? Tallpaw asked, remembering a discussion from moons ago. That's right. Sandgorse nudged him forward as the others headed away. It's hard gauging our depth exactly, but yesterday I hit clay. Tallpaw glanced up as he passed below the air hole, blinking into the pale light seeping from the moor. You found the seam? That's what we've been digging through all night. Sandgorse's mew was filled with warmth. We should break through to the other side soon. I'm so pleased you're here to see it happen. The first ever tunnel from High Moor to the river. Tallpaw felt the air dampen and fade as the soil around him thickened to mud. He was sharply aware of the air hole fading into the distance, and with it, the light and the scent of heather. He followed the sound of paw steps, staying close to the warmth of Mist Mouse's tail. As the tunnel twisted and turned, he quickly learned to recognize changes in the thickness of air that warned of a turning ahead. But his chest was tightening, and he found himself snatching for each breath. Sandgorse? he called nervously. Nearly there, Sandgorse's reply was muffled. Sandgo- A hard wall of mud slapped Tallpaw's muzzle. He yelped, half in pain, half surprised. Sandgore stumbled back. Turn to your right, concentrate. Sorry. Tallpaw pricked his ears, focusing harder on the space ahead. The air ahead seemed to tremble, and as he pushed on, the earth throbbed around him. What's that? Tallpaw froze. Was the tunnel about to collapse? It's just the river, Woolly Tail called. We're at the end of the tunnel. A few more scoops and we'll be in the gorge. In the gorge, fresh air. Tallpaw's chest relaxed a little. They were probably only a tail length from the wind and the sun. Sandgorse pushed past him. Wait here. Tallpaw heard paws scraping dirt. The clay's wetter here, Hickory Nose sounded jubilant. We must be close. Tallpaw hung back, listening above the hum of the river. The tunneler's pelts brushed against one another. Clay squelched beneath their paws. Tallpaw could hear their breathing as they worked. Should I dig too? He offered. Anything to get them into daylight faster. Splat! A hunk of clay landed in front of him. Mud spattered his nose. Start packing the dug clay into the walls, Mist Mouse ordered. Tallpaw wrinkled his nose as he scooped up a paw full of slippery earth and smeared it against the side of the tunnel. He felt the earth trembling beneath his pads. The river must be very close. Splat! Another lump landed at his paws. Splat, splat. The tunnelers were tossing clods so fast that Tallpaw hopped back to avoid them. He snatched another pawful and slapped it against the wall. Working as fast as he could, he gathered pawful after pawful of clay, spreading it along the passage behind him until he could hardly squeeze past the fresh, slimy layer. He paused for breath, his muscles aching. He must look like a mud-drowned rat by now. Tallpaw? As he turned back for more mud, he felt his father's breath near his muzzle. What? This is what I always dreamed of. Sandgorse mewed softly. You working beside me, digging a new tunnel together. A tunnel that may be the one to change Wind Clan's destiny forever. Tallpaw stiffened. Did Sandgorse think he'd change his mind about becoming a moor runner now that he'd been underground? Another gob of clay splatted in the passage beside Tallpaw, and his father darted back to help the others. Are we nearly there? Tallpaw called above the rumbling of the river. His ear fur quivered. Has it gotten louder? We'll hit air any moment, 
Sandgore sounded as excited as a kid at his naming ceremony. Wait! Mist Mouse snapped from somewhere in the darkness. What is it? Woolly Tail's mew was edged with alarm. The tunnelers paused. A long, mournful creak echoed along the passage. It sounded like stone flexing, with the deep suck of mud gradually releasing its grip on a hillside that had stood for moons. Star Clan, help us. Hickory Nose's mew was barely more than a whisper. What's happening? Tallpaw asked nervously. Run! Paws scrambled in the darkness. Tall Paw felt fur press against him. Tall Paw! Sandgorse's yowl pierced his ear fur. Run! Shock pulsed through Tall Paw. Spinning around, he pelted up the tunnel. Sandgorse! He glanced over his shoulder into blackness. Behind you! Sandgorse called. Hickory Nose! Woolly Tail! Mist Mouse! Here! 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 Faster, Tall Paw! Sandgorse urged, panic edging his mew. Behind them, an ear-splitting roar shook the earth as water exploded into the tunnel. Tall Paw's pads slithered on the mud. Ears flat, he flailed in the darkness, skidding against walls as the tunnels twisted. Let me through, Sandgorse barged past him. Keep your nose to my tail and run! Tall Paw obeyed, too frightened to speak. He couldn't run properly here. There was no space to curve his spine or stretch his legs. Terror pulsing through every hair, he focused on the touch of Sandgorse's tail tip on his nose. Water roared behind them like wind caught in a valley. It charged after them, making the ground tremble. Just keep running. Tallpaw's chest heaved. There was no air here. How could he breathe? Panic flared inside him, but he kept running until light flashed ahead. Brighter, brighter, now dazzling, and they were out, bursting from the tunnel like rabbits chased by a fox. Tall Paw collapsed on the grass. Through glazed eyes, he saw Hickory Nose flash past him with Woolly Tail and Mist Mouse. They had all made it. With a sigh, Tall Paw shut his eyes, his breath slowing. Paw steps paced the grass beside him. I can't believe we got it wrong. Tall Paw pricked his ears. Sandgore sounded annoyed. Wasn't he scared? Hickory Nose grunted. I'd been counting the tail lengths, and I was sure we had two more to go before we reached the river. We didn't take enough notice of the easy digging in Leaf Bear, Woolly Tail huffed angrily. We reached the water faster than we expected. Tallpaw opened his eyes. Mist Mouse was peering down the rabbit hole. At least the flooding will let us know where the river is. Tallpaw sat up. We nearly drowned. You can't go back down there. But we didn't drown, Sandgorse pointed out, and we've learned a lot for next time. Next time? Tallpaw shook his ears in disbelief. Are you planning to carry on with the tunnel? Of course, Mist Mouse looked over her shoulder at him. Now that we have a tunnel with water in it, we'll know what level to aim for on the wall of the gorge. Obviously, the new tunnel will have to come out higher next time. Should I fetch Plum Claw? Hickory Nose suggested. She'll want to be part of this. Yes, Woolly Tail turned excitedly in a circle. We'll be through to the gorge by moon high. But it's dangerous! Tall Paw's heart seemed to beat in his throat. Not if you know what you're doing. Sandgorse's eyes were bright with exhilaration. Had he enjoyed racing the river? Tall Paw winced. His father had even more courage than he thought. Why don't you go back to camp? Sandgorse meowed. Have a rest and get cleaned up. Then you can come back and help us with the new section. Come back? Tall Paw decided he'd rather face a patrol of Shadow Clan warriors. Sandgorse was purring. We'll break through to the gorge together, Tall Paw. Pale Bird will be so proud of us. Tall Paw backed away. No, 
His throat was dry. Never! Shock flashed through Sandgorse's gaze. But you saw how it was. Didn't you feel it? The excitement, the danger. He looked across the moors. You can't want to go back to running through Heather after that. Yes! Tallpaw jumped up, bristling with frustration. Why don't you get it? Just because you love tunneling doesn't mean I do. I'm not you. I thought we were all going to die down there. I'm a moor runner, not a tunneler.